Welcome back to Chemistry on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we have some chemical or compound names. We want to go to writing the formula for these, the chemical formula. So let's actually jump right into these examples so we can see how to do this. So here's our first example, calcium chloride. Right? So in this example, the first thing we want to do is we want to determine the individual ions that represent the calcium and the chloride. So calcium is always going to be our cation because first of all calcium is a cation, but it's also written first. And generally when we write compounds like this for the sake of general chemistry, the cation is first. So calcium we would have memorized is a Ca2+, right? That's because it's in group 2, so it has a 2 plus charge. Chloride is Cl with a minus one charge. So we'll put a one minus here. And the rule is for figuring out how this works as a compound is we cross the one down here and then cross this two down here like that. And so when we write it, the Ca, the calcium, will have a subscript of one, which of course we don't write, okay? One is understood and the chloride will have a subscript of two, and that two comes from the charge on the calcium. And so when we write this chemical formula, the compound was CaCl2, and that's our final answer. But one thing we need to make sure we do, and I'm gonna have you guys do this on the exam, is to actually first write these ions here. Don't just go straight to trying to write the final answer. This will also give you partial credit if you happen to mess up this last part. All right, let's look at the next one. Aluminum sulfate. So first of all, what is aluminum? So this is in group 3A. So this is going to have a charge Al 3 plus. You can also memorize this. Sulfate, this is one of our polyatomic anions. It's going to have the formula SO4 2 minus. And when we do this, we're going to treat the SO4 all together. Okay, this whole thing has a 2 minus charge. And with these polyatomic anions, uh, these atoms of SO4 don't come apart, they stay together, okay? So we're gonna, as we did in the previous example, cross these numbers down like this. Notice we don't care about the sign of them. So our aluminum is gonna have two of those because the two comes from the minus two on the sulfate. And then we need to make sure to put this polyatomic anion sulfate in parentheses and it's now gonna have three. That three comes from the charge on the aluminum. And so this would be our final answer, all right? Let's look at this example, aluminum phosphate. So again, as in the previous one, we had aluminum, has a three plus charge. Phosphate, PO4, and then it overall has a minus three charge. So what we'll do, is we will cross these over. So the three goes down here, this three goes over here. And so I write my aluminum. Now this three comes down here, and then I need to make sure to keep that phosphate because it's polyatomic in parentheses. This three comes down here. But unfortunately, this is not the final answer. This is not the correct answer. Whenever you have a situation where you can divide both of these numbers by something, that is, they're both divisible by three, you actually have to do that. And so you could think about essentially dividing both of these by three, and so it would just be one aluminum and one phosphate. And whenever the phosphate has a one on it, you don't actually have to write the parentheses around it. You could, but it's not necessary. So you could just put Al and then PO4, all right? Let's look at our next example. Let me kind of fold this up so we can see these better. So our next one is sodium nitride. All right, so sodium is in group one. It has a plus one charge, one plus. Nitride, not nitrate or nitrite. It's nitride with a D. This is a nitrogen with a three minus charge. So when we do this, we can cross these charges down. So sodium, Na, will now have a three, three of those, because the three comes from the nitride charge. 
and then the nitrogen will just have one, so we don't need to indicate anything there. And that one, which is understood, that was not supposed to do that, that actually comes from the charge on the sodium. So this right here would be our final answer there. All right, one more example here. Ferric perchlorate. This one's a little more challenging because we have to know what ferric is. So ferric is iron, Fe, with a 3 plus charge. If this were ferrous, it would be um, a 2 plus charge. Now perchlorate, this is another polyatomic anion. This is actually ClO4, and overall it all has a minus 1 charge. Okay. And so then we can cross these down. One comes down here, and let's write our final answer. So this iron has an understood one, just because the minus one charge on the perchlorate. However, the perchlorate, ClO4, we have to put this in parentheses because there's actually going to be three of them, three from that charge on the iron. And so this would end up being our final answer. So really, all in all, whenever you're given the name of one of these ionic compounds and you're asked to write its formula using chemical symbols, really the major thing you have to do is you have to know the charge of each individual ion, whether it's a single ion or a polyatomic ion, and then you cross those charges down and put them on the opposite ion. Okay, And if we had an example like aluminum phosphate, where it ended up being Al3PO4, 3, if both of these numbers are the same, they essentially cancel out. Or you can think about dividing them by um, some number by which they're both divisible, and then essentially factoring that down. So this is one aluminum and one phosphate. All right. So hopefully this video made sense to you. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications.